Okay, so first, I want to talk about some of the challenges that are there uh, in, in trying to accelerate digital transformation. So a lot of companies are, are going down this path, but there are a lot of roadblocks that they're faced with. And these include things like difficulties in storing OT data in the cloud, the complexity of moving and mapping that data around, costs of transferring the data, and the lack of open, open standards that reduce interoperability. So when you look at the reality of digital transformation, you know, the proposition looks amazing. It looks very simple. All these amazing tools, you know, analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence tools, all these data lakes, data, all these different systems that can be used. And uh, it's like, oh, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna simply go down and get our OT data and we're gonna make it, we're gonna bring it up there and make, all, make it possible to do more with that data. So it looks really simple, but in the reality, is that we're all here in the OT space that it's actually difficult, right? There's, we, we have to look at a solution that is based on OT first. We can't come IT down OT. OT has got to be where we get the data, we add that data with context, and we provide that data to other places. So what we're, we're trying to do is, of course, make this OT world that's very complex, very simple. But what's been happening with a lot of digital transformation uh, projects or digital twin projects is that everything that's on premise from, the, from an OT standpoint, whether it's the historians that are there or the, the live data that exists, they're thinking about, okay, that's, those systems exist, we're not gonna touch them. We're going to build other tools or, or you know, use, build you know, software programs that are gonna tap into that data, get that data, and then manipulate it and bring it up to higher levels. And when you, when you approach it that way, you have a lot of challenges in that you're moving data through lots of different systems. As you can see in this picture, this is a, a real life um, kind of architecture where they, you know, we're moving that data to the cloud, get different cloud services, going into data lakes, writing lambdas or Python code to move it into a different system to ultimately get the value of that. And when, when you approach it this way, the systems can become very, very brittle. And we're also not, not fundamentally changing the OT architecture or the OT landscape. And really that's, that's a, a big part of what we're trying to get across today is that you have to have the right foundation on the OT side, the right architecture in place and approaching what we call the single source of truth, uh, where you're able to define that data at the edge closest to where it exists so that they can be made available without having to map it, like you're seeing here, lots of different times. This, when you're doing lots of mapping, does not give you, you know, real true business outcomes. You're not getting into being able to build a UNS or any of that. You're, 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 just, you're just trying to move data around. Ultimately, we, we have to approach it differently. And that's the solution that we want to kind of share with you here today. The solution is leveraging Ignition and Cirrus Link to move data into a Snowflake database that allows you to store OT data with that context. And that context, all that being, being delivered at the edge, that single source of truth of that data. The solution leverages Ignition or Ignition Edge to build, to connect to all the devices, build data models or UDTs that um, provide all that asset information and all that metadata and that publish that data to a cloud MQTT server using MQTT transmission and using the Spark plug specification. Then from there, it goes, uh, we leverage a Cirrus Link IoT bridge for Snowflake to move that data with that context to a Snowflake database. And where, where we're not having to build anything, the data is, is automatically stored and, and those tables and structures are already automatically built out. And then from there, lastly, to build enterprise dashboards, by querying that data, and we can do that in Ignition through a JDBC driver to get that data back out. So again, if you look at this world here, quite complex when trying to you know, do lots of mappings and try to move that data from, you know, from, from the OT side into cloud infrastructures or into IT systems. And with this solution, it really simplifies the entire architecture. But we're also talking about leveraging tools and not coding here. So we really have two major platforms at play. We have the Ignition software platform on premise. We have the Snowflake platform for the, for the database on, in the cloud. And we're leveraging open standards, MQTT and Sparkplug to move that data into Snowflake 
leveraging that IoT bridge. So you can see this, this architecture drastic, is drastically simplified. There's no mappings of data. And we really truly get to that single source of truth at the edge where we define that data once and that data then is accessible everywhere else, especially getting stored to that database um, with that context. And then we can really truly get to business outcomes and act on that data. So what I wanna start with here is the first step in this journey, which is to connect and model the data that's on-premise and, and how people are doing that with the Ignition platform. So Ignition is server software that acts as a hub for everything on the plant floor to kind of achieve total system integration. We can connect to any PLC. We have drivers in Ignition to lots of the major PLCs that are there, but we can also communicate uh, over OPC UA. And uh, with OPC, we can connect to devices that support that directly or third-party OPC servers. So we can bring in really any kind of data from the OT world into Ignition. And once that data comes with Ignition, we can then provide additional context. We can build a data model, which we'll get into in more detail. But we can also bring data from limbs devices, maybe it's serial devices. We can bring it in from you know, people who are entering data into screens. We can get it from uh, other systems through maybe web services or other, uh, maybe reading files. There's all sorts of data that you get from the OT side that you also want to be able to bring into to the business side or into a, you know, a unified in space where you can act upon that data even further. So when you look at an architecture, kind of that single source of truth architecture, you know, a lot of companies are you know, of course building their SCADA systems and are connecting to all of those devices uh, against all the different protocols that happen to be out there. And when we're bringing that data in, that is all that OT data. And by being able to publish that data to an MQTT server, even just all on-prem, you are unlocking the power of that data. And you're getting it into you know, a format where anybody can, any application or service can consume that information. And so this is a really a decoupled architecture where the applications don't have to know about the, the source of the data and the data doesn't have to know where, you know, where it's going, right? We can ultimately publish that to a MQTT server and there's a lot more possibilities. So you get that OT data that's now easily defined as IT data and accessible and uh, lots of tools can leverage it once it's in that kind of system. Now, when we look at architectures where you have your remote assets or critical machines on the, on the plant floor where you have to have local HMIs or you want to distribute your systems out, that's where you know, Ignition Edge becomes an important part of the architecture where you can leverage Ignition Edge out there near those PLCs, near those, those Edge devices, connect to that data, pull it at faster rates, get more information in and publish that data securely and by exception to that MQT server where it can then be made available to, uh, you know, Ignition, uh, a centralized Ignition as a, as a big SCADA system or again, any other application that wants to work with it. And by, by doing this, we're really leveraging, we're, we're, we're kind of taking the brownfield world and bringing it into a modern infrastructure. And this is an important piece in terms of the, what we need to do on premise to have that single source of truth. Because once we have it into this kind of infrastructure, then it makes it possible to leverage new smart sensors or new equipment that we can, that, that we bring in, especially LoRaWAN has a lot of excitement around that, a lot of great sensors that are there where that data can be can easily be published and used and you know, in ignition where ultimately we can we can truly get access and, and define all the data we want right there you know where the where that information needs to be on, at the ot level so these are some of the architectures that are kind of facilitating you know modern architecture on premise that are allowing us to to utilize that data at higher levels now real quick i want to talk about data modeling um, because this is a key part of the solution we're talking about today is that we don't just want to push data into a database without the context because if we do that it's like you know are we what is the what is the engineering units of that value what are the what's the accepted range what's the desired range what asset is that part of we really need to to know that context so that we can leverage analytics or or ml or ai and it really comes down to being able to for companies to be able to define what they want their data to look like and, and build these models that are standardized across all of their locations. So as an example here, the bottom right, we're showing an energy data model. So let's say we build a UDT 
that is, represents the energy of a particular load, where we can see all the different process values. And of course, with those values, they have metadata like the engineering units, like the range and so on. And what we're doing is organizing these elements of data and, and standardize and how they relate to each other and in terms of that asset. And a lot of times mimicking real world objects, but it's all about providing context and make it easy to understand. Because if we define at the edge, that's a single source of truth. If that's published up with context, then nobody has to ask the questions as to what does that data represent or mean? It is, it is automatically understood. So data modeling is a key part and it's, it's been a part of the ignition for a long time, but Arlen will talk more about Sparkplug in terms of Sparkplug has the notion of data modeling built into the specification. So it's an easy translation to build UDT and publish that up through Sparkplug where then we can store and, and leverage that context. So again, once we build that, we want to get that data everywhere. And this is really coming down to the, the unified namespace concept. And a lot of companies are trying to figure out how do we build, how do we get our data into a, a centralized repository and where there's a standard way to organize and, and, and name all that data, provide that, that context, that structure, and have one communication interface where everybody can, can look at and understand and get access to that data. And so there are lots of, you know, MQTT has made it possible to get real-time data into a broker that many people can consume from, but a, a true UNS is more than just real-time data. It's about storing IT information, it's about storing OT information, it's about storing historical data, all this information we want to be able to, to get out of, to, to be able to leverage and use. And, and that's the exciting part about the solution is we're getting, we're, we're, we're able to actually effectively have a, a UNS um, that, that customers can work with.